welcome back. And I want to welcome from Circle of Life, and I want to welcome Linda Parr, and next to her is Kimberly Thomason, and Kimberly is an attorney. And we're going to talk about the things that uh, you and I need to know these things. And some people are smarter by far than I am because you've got to, it's frightening. And you, you've got to know ahead of time you're, if you have a will, if you have a power of attorney. And most of us, you know, those, we know those things exist, but we really don't understand them. Mm -hmm. and, and we depend on somebody else. And so you have a business called Circle of Life where you try to help people understand and make out the proper documents before, to protect themselves and their family. Before they're needed. Yeah. Um, this started because one day I realized that we live our lives on pieces of paper. Yes. We start with a birth certificate <laughs> and we end with a death certificate and everything in between will require a piece of paper. When you start to school, you need an immunization record. Yeah. When you go to college, you need a diploma from the high school. So I started thinking about that, and I started thinking, well, you know, people don't put enough thought into that. Plus, people don't want to talk about unpleasant things, like mm -hmm. I need a will. I know. Or a health care power of It's attorney. just easy to push it aside. It is, and think that I'll do it another time. But the time to do it is today, before you need it. Uh, you really need to have in place at all times a will, a medical power of attorney, a living will, and also a general durable power of attorney. But you need to be very careful when you're uh, giving someone your power of attorney. You need to be sure that that person can be trusted. All right, first of all, you, you have to have, you make a will and a lot of people out there will, you know, I don't have a lot of money. I'm not a rich person. I don't own a lot of property. Why do I need that? Well, it, without a will, you're going to allow the courts to decide, right. the probate court in particular, to decide how uh, your possessions, no matter how small you may consider your estate or how large, uh, you're going to allow the probate court to determine how it is uh, okay. transferred. And so it's much more... Um, it, important and beneficial for you to make sure that the people in your life, whether they be friends or family, are designated to receive whatever it is that you have. All right, so the first thing you need is a, is a will. Yes. And you have to have that done by, I guess, an, a legitimate attorney. You don't just sit down and write something down and put it in a drawer and think that's it. Am you, I right? You can have, that's right. Well, a simple will, um, people, and, and one of the things that I see a good bit is people don't understand that it needs to be witnessed by two individuals okay. and by a third party. And so there are certain things that have to go into your will in order for it to pass muster, if you will. All right. Okay. So now you you got the will. Now what's the next thing? You need a durable power of attorney. All right. What is that? Let you explain that. <laughs> Durable power of attorney actually gives whoever your designee is uh, full authority and power to act on your behalf. The, the thought being if you are incapacitated for any reason or you're not able to handle your financial affairs, this could, no matter how old you are, this could affect you. So, you know, a young parent that has children or yeah. one spouse is hurt well, you the could other. be in an automobile accident and you, and, exactly and not, you can't take it care isn't of necessarily that you're a very old person and you need it can happen at any time in your life it can where you will need so you have to choose a person that you're that going you to trust. designate oh that is so imperative and unfortunately older adults um, are more vulnerable to being taken advantage of when it comes to the designating of someone to hold their power of attorney so now what do you do? You, you, you find this person. Usually they call us uh, and ask us what do they need because uh, they're afraid that they were, maybe they have an illness and they're afraid they're going to become incapacitated yeah. and they'll say, who will take care of my affairs? Um, well, then we tell them that they need a durable power of attorney. So, but like we can't, we can't stress enough how it needs to be somebody that they can trust, not somebody that's recently come into their lives and has shown them a lot of attention, but someone okay. that they can really trust that they've known well, most for a while. Most people would choose a member of their family, I would think. 
Most people would choose a member of their family. However, sometimes um, people want to designate someone that doesn't have anything to gain from it okay. necessarily, right. but it needs to be someone that they have known a long time or someone that they have that has proven themselves trustworthy. And right. unfortunately, um, today there's more of a, an epidemic, and I'm going to call it an epidemic, of people preying on vulnerable adults. And vulnerable adult is really somebody that's more susceptible to um, manipulation, and it, it's never a direct. Yeah. Up yeah, front. If, if somebody has lost a loved one and they're grieving and they're unstable emotionally, which we all would be, uh, it's very easy for somebody to move in there and exactly. take yes. advantage. All right, exactly. so now you've got your will and you have your power of attorney. Your power of attorney. All right, what else? Then you also need a medical or health care power of attorney. That means if you have an illness and like maybe you have a car accident and you're unconscious, then the person who is named as your agent can make decisions for you as to what they should or should not do. Okay. Does that also include uh, people will say, well, I don't want to be kept alive if I have a condition that there is no hope for me, and I don't want to be, is that also a part of that? That is a part of what we call the living will. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, people can decide how they want uh, right. medication to be administered or not administered to yeah. them. And they really need to discuss that with their families. Uh, I have a daughter who is almost 50 and she doesn't want to discuss any of that as most children don't want to discuss with their parents yeah. because you know we think our parents are going to live forever but they just don't. And so we really need to discuss those things and we need to have that in order so that well, let's just say that a couple, um, young couple, has maybe one or two children, and the father is in an auto accident, and he doesn't, he doesn't have any of these. Yeah. yeah. Kim can tell you what I, in lack of a better word, what I miss. That is going to be mm -hmm. for the the wife who's mm -hmm. left, and she won't be able to do anything even though she has these children and she's trying her best to keep things going and she's grieving yeah, the loss yeah. of her husband, um, it, it's just not possible. Everywhere you go, they need a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's, so it's important to think ahead and plan mm -hmm. these things and yes. then once it's done, you don't need to, to brood about it. You know it's there, God forbid, if the, the need arises. Right. All right, now, so now we've got that. We've got the, what else? <laughs> well, any kind of paperwork that you need, uh, like Social Security administration papers, people that have been in the military need to make sure they right. have their DD-214s okay. because when anything, like when you pass away, the mortuary is going to ask for that, All right. for the military okay. to pay okay. any portion of that. And we do have, and I want to be sure, we do have a phone number. We and do. A, uh, that we want to put up there that people can... Um, uh, find, and it's called Circle of Life, and I have two phone numbers on here, but we've got one on the screen, and I'll keep all that information here if you didn't get it, but this is so important, and yes, it's it things we kind of put off, you know? It really is so important, and on one last note, I, I would um, really encourage people, and especially the elderly, because it just seems to affect them you know, so profoundly that they discuss with people, whether it's really close friends or family, where their documents are yeah. and and that everybody knows that it's in one location, which is what Linda has put together where, you know, insurance policies, so you wishes. Put a oh, look at this. We have That's a great, medical Linda. notebook. All right. And medical would... notebook, and it says for John Doe. It can be, <laughs> but you can get this, you know, a dollar someplace. Mm -hmm. And then you just put it all together, your right. records, and put it where somebody in your family that you trust, someone you trust, knows where it That's is. Right. And then if the situation comes, but it doesn't have to be somebody that's elderly. I mean, these things happen to people. They do. And you have to be prepared. Now, what else do you want to uh, share with we us? We also... Uh, volunteer for the Vial of Life. We go to churches and speak to groups. All right. Uh, where senior adults might be more 
mm -hmm. uh, prone to use this than younger people. But um, this is really a sticker that you put on your door that lets first responders know that you have the information. How nice. You just fill out this form and you put it in a little baggie and you attach it to your refrigerator. And all first responders will know where that is. They know it's supposed to be on the refrigerator if they see that decal. So if, if a person is, is living alone, for yes. instance? Mm -hmm. Or even like my husband, he wouldn't know uh, the medications that I take or so this the lists, surgeries. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just so, lists all that so that first responders would know, like if you were a diabetic, Linda, they that's have wonderful. certain things to do. That's wonderful. Yeah, and it we takes want, a few minutes. Yes, and we just want to help to educate mm -hmm. people to make life easier for them. Okay, so now we need a will, a living will, a medical power of attorney. And a medical power of attorney. And a durable power of attorney. Okay. All and right. someone that knows where it all is. That's okay. And then, <laughs> and then you can sit back and relax. But it doesn't take that long and it isn't that complicated. No. no. And it isn't that expensive. No. People think, oh, I can't go I to I know. An I've attorney. heard people say, oh, I couldn't afford to do that because the, the lawyers cost, you know, so much an hour and I, I just can't do it. No. But I do that and I do... Um, Kim has made sure that I don't do anything like practice law without a license. <laughs> Kim is my niece, by the way. That's, this is, and, this uh, is wonderful. So I prepare wheels and And you are located in, in Greer. Greer. Yes. And it's a circle of life. Document and, preparation. And uh, for all kinds of document preparation. And it can be a life-saving thing as well. So please uh, keep this in mind. And I'll keep this information here if you didn't get it. So we have Linda Parr and Kimberly Thomason, and I really appreciate this information. And we'll all just get on the ball and be smart about what we do. In the meantime, we'll see you next time. Stay happy.